Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. In the small, coastal town of Haven Rock, the weather was more than just small talk. It was a harbinger of unspoken fears. The locals spoke in hushed tones about the turning, a rare and mysterious meteorological phenomenon that occurred every 50 years. It was said to bring with it weather so strange and terrifying that it altered the very fabric of reality for those who experienced it. Sarah, a young meteorologist, had moved to Haven Rock, drawn by the legends of the turning. She was fascinated by the tales of skies that screamed and rain that fell like blood, as described in the town's archives from generations past. As the 50th year approached, her anticipation grew, her scientific curiosity mingling with a chill she couldn't quite attribute to the ocean breeze. The summer of the turning began innocuously, with clear skies and gentle winds. However, as the days passed, a dense fog began to roll in each evening, refusing to lift during the day, blanketing the town in a perpetual, clammy haze. The residents grew uneasy, whispering that the turning was upon them, and retreated to their homes, shuttering windows and reinforcing doors as if to keep out more than just the weather. Sarah set up her equipment on the cliffside overlooking the ocean, where she believed she would have the best vantage point to study the phenomenon. Her instruments measured changes in temperature, air pressure, and humidity, but they also began to record anomalies that science couldn't easily explain. Fluctuations that defied the laws of physics, as if the atmosphere itself was warping. One night, under a new moon, the air grew unnaturally still. The sea mirrored this calm, its surface like glass, an eerie reflection of the fog-smothered town. Suddenly, the silence was broken by a low moan that swept across the cliffs, escalating into a cacophony of unnatural sounds. Whispers, cries, and laughter mingled with the wind, as if the storm itself were alive. Sarah watched in horror as the sky began to twist, the stars blurring into a spiraling vortex that centered directly above Haven Rock. The sea responded with monstrous waves that crashed against the cliffs with increasing ferocity, threatening to swallow the land whole. As she recorded the events, Sarah's scientific detachment began to fray. She noticed something even more alarming. Figures appearing within the swirling fog, shapes that seemed almost human but moved with the jerky, unnatural motions of marionettes. They were converging towards the center of town, towards the eye of the storm. Driven by a mix of fear and responsibility, Sarah packed her equipment and headed into town. The streets were deserted, the fog so thick it muffled sound and diffused light into an omnipresent gloom. Sarah reached the town square, where the figures had gathered. They stood silently, facing the old town hall, their bodies swaying slightly as if listening to a melody only they could hear. The town hall's ancient weather vane began to spin wildly, screeching as it turned. Sarah watched as the doors to the building burst open, revealing a darkness so profound it seemed to absorb the faint light emitted by her flashlight. As she approached, compelled by a need to understand this nightmare, the ground beneath her feet trembled. The figures turned slowly to face her, their eyes hollow, their mouths agape, as if they were about to speak. The air around her vibrated with the power of the storm, a tangible pressure that seemed to push against her very soul. The story of Haven Rock's turning was far from over. Sarah found herself at the heart of the storm, both literally and metaphorically, as she faced the unknown horrors that lay ahead. As Sarah stood frozen, the eerie congregation of figures began to chant in a low, harmonious drone that resonated through the fog. The town hall's dark doorway seemed to pulse with the rhythm of their voices, beckoning her closer. Each step she took felt as though she were moving through a thicker, tangible darkness that clung to her resisting her progress. The earth vibrated beneath her, the tremors growing stronger with each chant from the crowd. As she neared the doorway, the figures' faces became clearer in the dim light. Distorted, anguished expressions twisted in pain, as if trapped in a perpetual scream. Their eyes, devoid of life yet luminescent, fixed upon her, piercing through her resolve. The wind intensified, howling around the square, carrying whispers of past turnings, voices of the town's ancestors caught in the tempest, recounting tales of despair and destruction. The doorway before her grew impossibly dark, a void that no light could penetrate. With each chant, 
The figures began to dissolve into the air, their forms turning into mist, merging with the swirling fog, leaving Sarah alone at the threshold of the abyss. The ground ceased its trembling, and a suffocating calm enveloped the area. A voice, ancient and seductive, emerged from the depths of the town hall, calling her name, promising answers, and unveiling hidden truths. Compelled by forces beyond her understanding, Sarah stepped forward into the darkness. The door slammed shut behind her, the echo of its closure marking the finality of her choice. Inside, the blackness overwhelmed her senses, erasing boundaries and depth, leaving her in a state of sensory deprivation where only her thoughts echoed. The voice continued to speak, now a cacophony of multiple whispers, narrating the origins of the turning, a curse born from an ancient pact made by the town's founders with a primordial entity that demanded a cycle of chaos and renewal every 50 years. The entity thrived on the psychic energy of the townspeople, harvested through fear and turmoil. As the entity's whispers seduced her deeper into the building, Sarah realized that the town hall was much larger on the inside than it appeared. Corridors extended endlessly, rooms branched off, shifting and reconfiguring like a living maze designed to disorient and trap. Sarah's flashlight flickered out, leaving her in darkness. Panic set in as the temperature dropped, her breath visible in the chilling air. She felt something brush against her, soft whispers touching her ears. Each step she took echoed by a chorus of faint, mocking laughter. Suddenly, light erupted around her, revealing a massive chamber with walls covered in ancient, undecipherable runes that glowed with an eerie, phosphorescent light. In the center stood a colossal stone altar, its surface stained with ages of use. The entity, now visible, was a terrifying specter, its form constantly shifting, shadows twisting around it like serpents. Its eyes, if they could be called that, burned with a cold fire, fixed intently on her. You are the witness, the scribe of this century's turning, the entity intoned, its voice reverberating through the chamber. Document this renewal, and your name will endure with us. Understanding her role in this cyclical horror, Sarah realized her fate was sealed. As she turned to find the walls covered in names, dates, and stories of previous turnings, she knew her own name would soon join them. With a resigned heart, she picked up an ancient ink-dipped quill provided on the altar, its point sharp and ready. As she wrote, documenting the horrors, the chamber began to close in, the walls inching nearer, the ceiling descending. The air grew thinner, the entity's whispers louder, and the darkness deeper. Sarah continued to write, her words the last testament of this cycle of the turning, her final lines a blend of desperation and acceptance. Outside, Havenrock waited in silence. The storm passed, the sea calm, as if nothing had happened. The town would wake to a clear day, oblivious to the sacrifice made in the darkness. The cycle completed once more, its appetite satiated until the next turning. In the quaint village of Windale, nestled at the foot of the Whitmore Mountains, the residents lived in harmony with the land and the seasons. But every ten years, the village would brace itself against a phenomenon known locally as the mournful winds. During this time, the winds would carry not just the chill of the northern gales, but also eerie, whisper-like sounds that seemed almost human. Ella, a young and ambitious meteorologist, had recently moved to Windale, intrigued by the phenomenon that baffled scientists and terrified locals. The mournful winds were rumored to be not just a natural occurrence, but a harbinger of inexplicable happenings. Unseasonal weather patterns, bizarre animal behavior, and even missing persons cases that coincided with the wind's arrival. As the decade mark approached, Ella set up her equipment, determined to study the winds and uncover their secrets. She installed advanced weather stations around the village and in the surrounding woods, each equipped with audio recording capabilities to capture the wind's mysterious sounds. The first night of the mournful winds arrived with an unnatural calm, the air grew oppressively still, and a thick fog rolled in from the mountains, blanketing the village in a damp, heavy mist. Ella monitored her equipment closely, noting the sudden drop in temperature and the increasing humidity. Then, just after midnight, the winds began. They started as a low moan, barely audible over the equipment's hum. But as the night progressed, the winds grew louder, and the moaning became a cacophony of whispers and cries, as if the night air itself were lamenting. 
Ella listened to the recordings, her heart racing as she tried to discern any discernible words or patterns in the sounds. The next day, the village awoke to an unseasonal frost that covered the ground and trees, sparkling eerily in the morning light. Reports came in from locals about strange occurrences during the night. Shadows moving in the fog, figures standing in the fields who disappeared when approached, and animals found miles from their homes, disoriented and scared. Ella's fascination turned to unease as she reviewed the weather data and recordings. The sounds seemed almost responsive to her presence, growing louder whenever she ventured out to check on her equipment. That night, determined to experience the phenomenon firsthand, Ella set out into the woods, where the winds seemed most concentrated. As she walked deeper into the forest, the fog thickened, muffling the world around her, until all she could hear were her footsteps and the haunting wail of the winds. Her flashlight beam seemed to be swallowed by the fog, giving her just enough light to see a few feet ahead. Suddenly, her flashlight flickered and went out, plunging her into darkness. The wind's whispers intensified, swirling around her, voices so close they felt like breaths on her neck. Panicked, Ella fumbled with her flashlight, her fingers numb with cold. When the light flicked back on, she gasped. In front of her, illuminated briefly by the beam, was a figure cloaked in mist, its features blurred, but its eyes unmistakably human. It stood motionless, watching her, then turned and vanished into the fog as quickly as it had appeared. Shaken, Ella hurried back to the village, the sounds of the winds chasing her. She locked herself in her home, reviewing her recordings, trying to make sense of what she had seen and heard. But the mystery only deepened, the data revealing no scientific explanation for the phenomena. That night, as Ella tried to sleep, the winds continued to howl outside her window, a relentless reminder of the unknown. The story of the mournful winds was far from over, and Ella knew she was now part of it, drawn into the enigma that had haunted Windale for generations. Throughout the night, Ella lay awake, her mind racing with the chilling possibilities of what she had experienced in the woods. The haunting images of the figure shrouded in mist lingered in her vision, blurring the line between her waking thoughts and the edges of dreams. Each gust of wind against her window pane sounded like faint, desperate whispers, urging her to listen, to understand. As dawn broke, the winds did not subside as expected. Instead, they grew in intensity, whipping the village into a frenzy of flying debris and chilling howls. Ella ventured outside, her recorder in hand, determined to capture the phenomenon in the harsh light of day. The village seemed deserted, the streets empty except for the swirling leaves and the occasional flash of movement in the periphery of her vision, shadows darting between the buildings, always just out of clear sight. Determined to find answers, Ella headed towards the heart of the forest where she had encountered the mysterious figure. As she approached the same spot, the wind seemed to carry a cold so penetrating it bit into her bones. Her equipment started malfunctioning, the screens flickering with static as if the very air was charged with a sinister energy. Suddenly, the woods fell silent, the wind stopped abruptly, and a thick, oppressive fog rolled in, enveloping her in a suffocating embrace. The silence was absolute, unnatural, and complete. Then, from the dense fog, the same haunting figure emerged, clearer now than before. It stood a mere few feet from her, its eyes piercingly bright against the grayness of the mist. Frozen in place, Ella stared at the figure, her mind a whirlwind of fear and fascination. The figure pointed towards the ground at its feet, where the fog seemed to swirl and condense into a vortex. Hesitantly, Ella stepped closer, her recorder dropped and forgotten. As she neared the swirling fog, images began to flash within it, scenes of past turnings, each one more terrifying and violent than the last. She saw images of the village's ancestors, bound by some ancient curse, their faces twisted in agony. The figure beside her spoke in a voice that was a chorus of many, echoing through the trees. The cycle must continue, and you, the witness, shall bind it anew. Before she could react, hands emerged from the fog, spectral and cold, gripping her arms with a force that was both painful and paralyzing. Ella struggled, her cries lost in the wind that suddenly howled back to life, drowning out all other sounds. The hands pulled her towards the vortex, and as she was drawn into the mist, 
her vision blurred into the scenes of horror from the past, becoming part of the turning herself. The village of Windale woke the next day to a calm that was unsettling. The mournful winds had ceased, leaving behind a silence that spoke of unspeakable things. When they searched for Ella, they found only her abandoned equipment near the edge of the woods, the recordings filled with the sounds of the wind and a final, cut-off scream. Ella was never seen again, her fate woven into the fabric of the village's legend. The cycle had claimed another soul, ensuring that the mournful winds would one day return to haunt the living, a perpetual reminder of the village's dark pact with the forces hidden within the Whitmore Mountains. In the heart of Tornado Alley, where storms were as common as the sunrise, the small town of Harrowfield stood resiliently. The locals were a hardy bunch, accustomed to the sky's mood swings and the whirling dance of the tornadoes that swept through their lands. But there was one meteorological anomaly that even the oldest residents feared, the Black Storm. Unlike the typical tornadoes that spun from storm clouds, the Black Storm was something different, something otherworldly. It came every 10 years, under the cover of night, its arrival announced by a sky so dark it turned the stars invisible. The wind didn't howl, it whispered, carrying voices that only some could hear, speaking secrets meant to be forgotten. Lila, a young storm chaser fresh from college, arrived in Harrowfield with her high-tech equipment and a boundless enthusiasm for capturing nature's fury on her cameras. She had heard of the black storm in hushed tones at meteorological conferences, dismissed by most as a rural legend, a ghost story spun from the fabric of storm chaser lore. Determined to either confirm or debunk these tales, Lila timed her visit to coincide with the decennial return of the Black Storm. Setting up her base in a field just outside Harrowfield, Lila prepared her drones and camera equipment under the watchful eyes of the setting sun. The locals had warned her, their voices tinged with an earnestness that bordered on fear. Don't listen to the winds, they'd said, but Lila, armed with skepticism and scientific curiosity, paid them no heed. As night enveloped the landscape, the air grew unnaturally still. The crickets ceased their chirping, and even the wind seemed to hold its breath. Lila checked her instruments repeatedly, but nothing appeared out of the ordinary, until the darkness began to deepen. Looking up, Lila saw the stars blotted out one by one, as if a giant hand was smothering the light of the universe itself. Then, the whispers started. Soft at first, they were almost drowned out by the sudden thump of her heart. They grew in volume, a discordant symphony of voices that seemed to emanate from the air itself. The words were indistinct, maddening. Lila grabbed her headphones, trying to isolate and record the phenomenon, but the voices penetrated even this barrier, seeping into her thoughts. Pressing her hands against her ears, Lila turned her cameras to the sky as it split open, revealing not the expected funnel of a tornado, but a vast, gaping maw of utter darkness. It was as if the night had torn open, revealing a deeper darkness beyond. From this abyss, a new wind began to blow, gentle gusts at first that grew into gales. But these were not mere winds. They carried with them an odor of decay and the chill of the grave. Her drones, sent up into the heart of the storm, spun erratically, their feeds flickering with images of the churning darkness before going dead one by one. Lila watched in horror as the sky descended, the blackness reaching down towards the earth like the fingers of a giant unseen hand. The voices grew louder, demanding, pleading, threatening. They called to Lila by name, beckoning her to step into the embrace of the storm, to join the voices in the wind. With every fiber of her being screaming against the idea, she found her resolve weakening, her steps inching toward the swirling darkness. The story of the black storm was far from over. As Lila stood on the threshold between earth and void, her scientific mind battled with the primal fear of the unknown. The storm beckoned, and the night waited to see if she would heed its call. Lila's breath fogged in the chill air as she inched closer to the gaping maw of the storm. The whispers in the wind became shouts, clear and commanding. Join us, they cried. See what lies beyond. Her mind, trained in the rational and the observable, fought against the lure of these voices, but something primal within her resonated with their call. The storm's pull grew stronger, an almost physical tug at her soul. Her equipment lay forgotten on the ground, strewn about as if it were mere toys by the storm's gathering power. 
The blackness above swirled faster, the edges of the void shimmering with an ethereal light that was neither comforting nor entirely natural. Lila took another step forward, her rational mind overwhelmed by curiosity and a deep, unexplainable yearning. As she crossed the threshold into the storm's embrace, the ground beneath her seemed to dissolve. She was no longer standing in a field outside Harrowfield, but was suspended in a void, the blackness enveloping her completely, isolating her from the world she knew. In this endless night, the voices coalesced into forms, shadowy figures that mirrored human shapes, but lacked substance. They circled around her, their features blurred and shifting, whispers echoing from faces that seemed familiar yet grotesque. These were the souls claimed by the Black Storm, lost forever to its call, bound to its eternal darkness. Lila tried to speak, to ask why they were trapped here, but her voice was lost in the wind. Instead, the figures reached out to her, their hands cold and insubstantial, touching her with the despair of the damned. We are the unending, they said in unison, a chorus of misery and resignation. And now, so are you. As the reality of her fate sank in, Lila's heart pounded with a mix of fear and sorrow. She realized she would never leave this place, that her curiosity had been her undoing. The storm was not just a meteorological phenomenon, but a collector of souls, a purgatory for those driven by the desire to understand, to explore beyond the limits. Outside the storm, in the world of the living, the black storm eventually dissipated as mysteriously as it had arrived, leaving behind a clear, star-filled sky. The residents of Harrowfield emerged from their shelters, relieved yet mournful, for they knew someone had been claimed by the storm. When they found Lila's abandoned equipment in the field, they understood that she had crossed into legend, another victim of their haunted skies. In the void, Lila's last conscious thought before succumbing to the eternal night was a warning she wished she could pass to the world. Some mysteries are not meant to be solved. Her voice, now just another whisper in the wind, joined the others in the storm, her curiosity and courage woven into the fabric of the black storm, waiting to lure the next brave soul into its depths. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.